Hi, and welcome to this overview of Storyline 360. I'm Dave Anderson, and in this video, we're gonna take a, a big picture look at getting started with Storyline 360. So we'll begin by looking at how to start a new project. That's the first thing you'll do. And there are actually a few different ways that you can do that. And then we'll look at just a brief tour of Storyline's interface. Now, spoiler alert for those of you who have worked in PowerPoint, uh, you'll find that Storyline's interface is quite familiar. There's a lot, a lot of similarities between the two. And then we'll switch gears and look at a published example, a final course, just to give you an idea of what a project could look like. It'll also allow me to share a lot of different slide types, content slide types, interaction slide types with you, so you get an idea of, of all the possibilities that are in Storyline. And then we will come back to Storyline and build a simple interaction, a tabs interaction, just so you can see a typical workflow in Storyline. Now, the best thing about tabs interactions in Storyline is that they really let you touch on each of Storyline's core building blocks, that states layers, triggers, and slides. So we'll build a really simple interaction so you get an idea of what, uh, what that workflow looks like. All right, well, we have a lot to cover. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, when you first open the Storyline 360 desktop app, you'll quickly notice a few ways to begin a new project. If you look up here in the top left corner, you can see we have the option to create a new project. Now, this is a blank project that you'll start from scratch. You can also record the screen. So if you are creating software simulations or screencasts, you can immediately begin recording directly from the, from the start screen. Now, if you're working with existing content like PowerPoint or Studio 360, you can give your development a jump start by importing PowerPoint or any of the Engage and Quizmaker files, as well as a Storyline template. And importantly, you can also import quiz questions from Excel spreadsheets. And for Articulate 360 team subscribers, you'll see the exclusive collaboration feature called Team Slides. Let's pull this open and take a look at it. And so with Team Slides, you can create a collaboration of shared content that everyone on your team can access, making it really easy to collaborate on projects and maintain consistency from course to course. Now, I, I mostly use this for my training. You can see I have the folders created on the side and then inside of each folder, I have different templates. But let's start with a blank project. So I'm gonna close out of Team Slides and click New Project. Now, Storyline 360's interface should seem familiar if you have ever worked in PowerPoint. The layout and features are all super intuitive and really follow some PowerPoint-like layouts and designs. However, Storyline 360 is powerful enough that you can create virtually any type of interaction or assessment imaginable. But you don't always have to create everything from scratch. To speed up your development, you can start with our content library templates. So we'll pop that open right here. And you can see that the content library templates are fully designed, professionally designed templates that you can use to jumpstart your course development. Now, each template set has about 40 to 50 slides and they, they include all the popular slide types. You can see the filters over here, different ways to open the course with the course openings. You have your titles and sections, content slides, which are obviously a big part of e-learning. And we can also filter by themes. So each, each template comes in a light, and dark theme. We want to search the light themes and maybe we wanted to look for some scenarios and interactions. You can get a, a quick look at the different styles that are available. Now all the content and text and graphics and colors are fully editable so you can customize these to align with your own course and branding needs. Now you can also search for an interaction type by just typing in the search field up here at the top. I'll say uh, process and we can search and see the different process, process interactions. Let's use the Vibrance and click Insert. All right, so let's drill down into this slide. So just double click the slide thumbnail, and then now we're in slide view. This is where you're gonna do most of your course authoring. Now with all content library templates, the, the text and the colors are all editable, so you can customize and make these work for your own projects. Images will always be inserted as placeholders. So let's say I, I deleted that image and I, I want to go find another image from, from either, uh, let's turn off the heading. I want to find one from Content Library or I can search my own hard drive for my own images. I'll just find one here on, on Content Library and just type in a search term. 
Yeah, great. Select an image, click insert, and that's how easy it is to customize your slides by replacing existing placeholder images with the content library images. All right, so let's just preview this real quick just so you can see how, how this tabs works. So we have four tabs right here, and you can see we have the visual hover state for each. As we click each tab, our content here on the right is replaced with content that's loaded on slide layers. Slide layers is how you can show additional or more information for each object on the slide. So we click step two and we load additional, additional content. So the point here is that this template is already functional. The placeholder text is here to help guide you for modifying the template, kind of walks you through some ideas or suggestions. Each template's going to be a little bit different. But the idea is that you replace this text with your own text, your own colors, your own titles to make this your interaction. But it is a fully functional interaction when you first insert it. But to show you really what's possible, it always helps to look at a final course or an existing project just to give you an idea what a completed course could look like when you get going building your own project. So let me I'm gonna pull this open here real quick. So I'm here in Story View, and this is a a completed project and you can immediately see how much larger this project is. We have a lot of scenes and inside of each scene we have individual slides. Now the scenes can be collapsed and this helps manage your larger courses. So for example if I wasn't working in this first scene I can collapse this and notice how it shrinks and consolidates all of those slides right there. That makes it really easy when you need to drill down into a specific scene to access a, a slide. I'm going to pull that first one open so I want to show you a couple things here and then we'll preview preview the slide. So the benefit to story view as you start to begin build out your projects is that story view really makes it easy to visualize the relationships between different slides. So if I zoom in here, I have two menu slides, one for employee and one for manager. But as they click each of the slide thumbnails, you see these little red lines that are coming out from each object, from each slide thumbnail. That lets me preview the trigger and I can see the relationship and see where each slide is branching or linking to. So we have one, one that's jumping out here to scene two. I have, let me click, cancel that out. You can see the other, the other lines right here. I uh, haven't a couple times selected them. There we go, that one's going to 4.1. So I can quickly see where each of these links and that helps me understand where my course is flowing. But as you start to build the course, you're going to find story view is far more valuable to you as you add slides and interactivity. But I'm going to go ahead and preview this so we can look at some of these completed interactions just to give you an idea of what's possible. Okay, so on the introduction screen, we had a subtle animation that played when the slide first was loaded. A couple things to note up here. You can see right here we have the menu. If I click this, it'll expand the menu and you can see all of the slides and chapters in your course. Now we set this up to be hidden or collapsed by default, so we just focus the learner on the slide content. So right now we're previewing our course in desktop mode, and I can see that by coming up here to the top where I have my, my device icons. So because Storyline 360 has a responsive player, it means your courses will automatically adapt to any screen size or orientation. So your courses will always look great on any device, and you can preview them on different devices by clicking each of these device icons. So here we are in tablet with the horizontal orientation and a tablet in a portrait, a phone or mobile device in a horizontal, and then finally a, a portrait view. Now notice how the portrait view doesn't look so great right here, right? The, the course is, is widescreen and it looks far better on a, in a horizontal orientation. So if you find your course looks better in a particular view, you can disable the other view. See the little gear icon right here? Click this and you can configure the playback properties. So I want my course to display in landscape only. I think landscape looks the best for the responsive modes, for the responsive views. So we'll say landscape only, I click OK. Now this is a landscape view, but look what happens when a learner tries to view the course in portrait your learners will be prompted to reorient their device. Okay, let's return to desktop view and check out the rest of this course. And we're taken to an introduction. Now here's our first 
use of variables. When I click either the manager or the employee, I'm going to set a variable so Storylines so my project knows whether I'm an employee or a manager and I'll see content only specific to my role. So even though I'm just going to make the choice once here, content that I am presented going forward is conditional upon whether I choose manager or employee. So if you jump into the employee section, we're going to have a, a tabs interaction similar to the one we viewed earlier, only this is obviously designed differently. So I'll click each tab and you can see I get a completed check mark to indicate that I visited each of the tabs. And one more. And let's move on to the next slide. And here's a custom menu set up. A couple things to note right here. You have the custom button that links me to a chapter or module. We have an estimated uh, time for duration for each of the, the chapters. Then I also have a wellness quiz over here that's only going to be available to me after I've completed the these three modules. So Storyline is going to use variables again to track and determine when each of these three sections have been completed. So let's just jump into each one real quick. And so we're going to get our health score. And this is set up like a quiz, but we're going to get feedback based on the choices we make. So how often do you eat healthy? I'll say most of the week. That should get me uh, a good result. And we have a little graph right here that's presented. I'll move on to the next question. Notice how we also are displaying a progress bar up top. So we're on our second question. And now we're using an interactive object, the slider. So we're using a slider to rate how our work-life balance uh, is. So um, let's just choose something a little bit on the sad side so we can see a balance of the different scores. I'm going to click Submit. And this, again, is giving me feedback based on a score of 25. And then how many days of the week do you exercise? Let's see what three gets us. And Submit. Again, about 80%. Now I've got my completed chart up top. Move on to the next. And check this out. We've now completed this first module and we have a different icon here, the check mark, that indicates that it's now completed. And so we'll do the same for the next uh, two modules. And this is a screencast, so we'll say we'll get started. And so there's some audio playing. It's asking me to choose live classes. And you can see the two choices right here. I'm going to click search. And so it's guiding me through the process for signing up. So I'll say stress. So I'm typing that in. Press enter. I can see my search results. Now I have a prompt down here indicating that I should click the join. Yeah, and so we'll go ahead and look at the coaching section. This was a simulation recorded in Storyline, and now we're stepping through this interaction by the, following the prompts that are presented to us. All right, and we'll click see more. Now we'll just go to the next section, and now you can see how this section is now completed. So one more section, and then we should unlock the quiz section. So we'll click check it out. And this is a 360 degree image. We have our instructions up top. I have got it. I've got these little interactive markers that I can click to explore. In this case, this one has a video in it. Close that out. And then we can click and scroll to view different areas of the fitness gym. And then I have some markers using the icon of a door to indicate that this probably leads me to another 360 degree image virtual tour. And here we are at the desk. And then we can continue exploring each of these rooms. So we have the supplies, towels, and down below it's telling me I've only visited two of four. So I need to continue to explore to find the remaining two items. And they could be hot spots. In this case, it's another marker on the door, I reckon. All right, now we're back out and we can continue exploring. Now, when we finish this section, notice how all three of these are showing us with a completed icon. And then we also have the uh, option now to take the, to take the wellness quiz. All right, so first question, we make a choice. You can see as we click each of these buttons, we get the selected states. Only one option is indicated as selected. So I'll click submit. Get my feedback. Okay, that's right. Continue. And how many free nutrition? I want to say five, but I don't know if that's correct. Incorrect. And then which exercises do we offer? We will say all three. And you can see if I click each one of these again, then the object is deselected. And that's correct. So with the custom results slides, you can design 
your score and passing score and results any way you like. And you say you have some options also to review, print, and retry, retry the quiz. And then clicking next, we get a course complete and back uh, some options to go back to the main menu as well as exiting the course. All right, so let's take a look at building a simple interaction just so you can see the workflow for building and working in Storyline. Okay, so here's a tabs interaction from the demo course we just looked at. Let's preview this once and take a look at what it is we're going to quickly build. So we have this introduction content box that animates into onto the slide. And we have three buttons down here with hover states. As I click each button, we're loading additional content above. And you can also see we get a check mark indicating that the state has been visited. And again, we get some different content. And then finally, our third, our third tab. All right, let's go ahead and set this up. I'm going to create a, a new slide. So from the Home tab, I can choose New Slide. Or from Slides, I can add, add a new slide. So this project had a background image. So let's just begin with that. We'll add a, a content library photo. So let me type in nature. We'll just scroll down here and find, find the image that we used in the project. Maybe you have to load a couple more. There we go. There's the image. Click insert. And because this image is the same aspect ratio as my slide, it fills the slide up perfectly. I'm going to rename this object, call it background. And let's lock the layer to prevent any unnecessary or unwanted nudging of the image. So I'm going to add three shapes here for buttons, but I'll begin with the first one. It's always a good idea in Storyline to set the first object up the way you like and then duplicate that object. So if you look back at this first slide, we have these uh, dark gray buttons. So I'll set the first button up right here. I'm going to set it up, format tab. I'm going to set a fill color. There's a dark color. And I'm going to remove the shape outline. Sometimes I like the outline, and this time I'm not using that. And I'm going to set this up at a width of 319 and a height of 184. OK. Now, Storyline is going to work a lot like PowerPoint in that if I want to add a label to the shape, I can just type right here on the slide. So I'll just add that first label improved health. Now, real quick, notice how this is left aligned. Well, if I want to center justify it, I can just select the shape and up here from the home tab on the ribbon, just choose align center. And now we have our text on the shape. And the benefit here is that the text is connected to the shape and I don't have to move around multiple objects. Sometimes you might type separately just to have more control over where the type is positioned. But in this case, in the center, it's perfect. Now we're going to add the states, the states for the visual indications of when this is being hovered over or the mouse is rolling over it, as well as selected and visited. So under the states tab, I'm going to edit the states. So I click the edit states button. And now we're inside of the objects, object states. And so from here, I want to add a new state. And this first state will be a built in state. And I can select it from the drop down menu. This is hover, click add. And I'm just going to change the color, just make this a little bit lighter for the hover state. So from the Format tab up here on the ribbon, we're going to select a lighter color. That's going to work. And then let's add another state. And this time, it's going to be a visited state. A visited state is a built-in state. And it basically means as soon as you click something, it's been visited. You've, you've already visited either that slide or that content. You've clicked it. It's already been clicked. So visited, and we click Add. And I'm going to go back and I'll just use the default color, which should be selected. There it is. And then finally, we'll use a selected color, a selected state, which is a current or active state. So in the way this, this interaction was working, one of those buttons at any one time was showing a active or selected state. And we're going to change that to be more of an accent color. So let's just choose the green. Now, the one thing I like to do here for the visited state, just to show that it's been completed. Because right now, if you look at it, the visited state visually is exactly the same as the, as the normal state. Well, what would make sense here would be to give some sort of additional visual feedback, maybe an icon or a check mark. So we can grab one from Content Library. We're going to go to the Insert tab and Icons. And there still remembers my previous search, which was Nature. I'm going to type in check mark. 
and just find a small check mark, check mark icon. And there it is. I could resize it. I mean, I'm going to color it though, because it does uh, seem a little bit light. There we go. Let's make the white color and we can bring that down just a little bit. Just use it with my caro. Okay. There's my first button. That's looks pretty good. I'm going to click done editing states in the timeline tab. I would like to name this. I'll call it button 01. And then with this, let's duplicate it now because I already have this first button set up the way I like. So I can duplicate several ways, one of which is to press control D and that'll duplicate. And I'm going to change the text right here. Now, when I click this real quick, check out the states down below. Notice how the text goes across, carries across all of the states we just created. Well, watch what happens when I change the text on this. Increase in happy happiness. And I just click away. Those the text carries across those as well. So that's really cool. And now another way, well, let's rename this one button 02. And then finally, another way we could copy is to press and hold the control key and then click and drag to create a copy. And then I'll select the text on this one and we'll call this more connected. Now I need to align these across the bottom. So I'm going to grab the first box, first button. And you see how I get the smart guides that help line up to the slide. If I didn't see those, which you would, but if you want to do uh, just go a different way, you could select the object and then up here from the format tab, align it to the left. And because no other object is selected, it's aligning the object to the slide. And I'm going to say align it to the bottom. And then for the second one, we'll say align it center and then we'll align it to the bottom. And then I'll just go my preferred way, which is just to use storylines, smart guides. Okay. Now, just to be certain that these are spaced equally, I'm going to drag a selection around all three of them. And then again, from the format tab, let's just distribute horizontally. And let's add now the initial content up. Oh, I got to rename this real quick. I want to keep the name straight. It makes it really easy for us to uh, better find the object we're looking for. So I'm going to add just that content piece up here just to have the introduction. So I'm just going to add a, just to keep it simple, just add a single white shape and drag in a, a simple box rectangle. We'll make the shape white and turn off the outline as well. Now I do have some text here. I'm going to copy this real quick. Control C. And on this one, I'm not going to type the text directly on the shape. Instead, I'm going to choose insert text box and add my text. I'm going to make this a heading. So with the text selected, come up to the text box. Let's choose the heading font. So heading, and then we'll make that a little bit larger. And then I'm going to grab my, my body text, control C, and then this time insert. One more time, text box, and I'm just going to drag a open text box right here, control V to paste, and I'll make that my default text. Should probably make that bold and it's too large. And then we'll just center it in the, in the uh, shape. Notice again how I see the smart guides to indicate that I'm now placing this in the center of the shape. And I'll do the same for this other one. There we go. Now with that, I can select both the text boxes as well as the shape, press control G to group. And I'll just call this one introduction. Introduction text. Okay. So there's my intro text right here. Let's make sure this is also centered on the slide because it's now a group. When I go to format and then choose to align center, it'll place it in the center of the slide. Okay. At this point, I have a uh, kind of a framework of my interaction, but I do need to create additional slide layers for the content for each of these, for each of these buttons. So let's go ahead and create our first slide layer. And we do that down here in the bottom when there's slide layers, just create new layer. And I'm going to recreate most of what I see right here, but I think, well, you know, I, I need to, I want to create a white box and I want to create the title and the text. Why don't I just go back to the base layer and copy what I've already set up? So I can select all of this control C to copy it. And I'm gonna come back up here to untitled layer. And I can paste that right here on the slide. So just click on the slide, paste it. And I pasted it right back on the slide layer. So it looks the same. Now I'm just going to make a quick change right here. I'm going to call this layer improved health. And I'll leave the, the text here because uh, really what I want to do is just make some kind of label up here so we can see that things are, are changing. 
So let's go ahead and name this one improved health. And I can duplicate this now. So rather than having to repaste an object or recreate the slide objects, click the duplicate selected layer button. And I'm going to name it after this middle button for increase in happiness. So let's just rename this increase in happiness. And then let's also change this up top. So sometimes when I'm when I'm prototyping like this, just building something quickly, I like to just keep some basic headings in place so I can verify that Storyline's doing what I uh, hope it does, but I don't want to lose my time trying to make uh, everything perfect or worry about all the content and design, duplicate layer again, because I don't know if it's going to work as I want it to work. So just having something simple right here uh, without worrying about all the body text or the actual placement just means that I can get the functionality, the technical aspect of my course or my project done, and then I can worry about going in and updating the content. So we'll call that more connected. And at this point, we only have a couple steps left. We have three slide layers. Slide layers are how we show more content or additional content from our base layer. And I'll just call this one tabs interaction. And with this, I just need to now add the triggers to show each of the slide layers when each of these three buttons is clicked. So the way we add triggers is to create a new trigger. And we're always asking ourselves when we work with triggers is we begin with the action. So what is it we want to do? And then when do we want to do it? Well, I do want to show a layer and I'll say which layer? Well, I'll say first one is improved health. And when do I want to do it? When the user clicks button one. So there's my, my first trigger. Now that I have that trigger set up, here's a little shortcut that you can also do. I'm going to copy that selected trigger, copy it, and then shift click the remaining objects, in this case, the last, the, these two buttons to multi-select. And then I can paste the selected trigger on those. And look at that. Now I have two more triggers quickly created. Now for the second button, I need to update the improved health layer. I need to change that to increase in happiness. So we get this little hyperlink and button three will go to more connected. Let's preview the slide real quick and see how, how this turns out. But this tabs workflow right here, we've got the hovers, is a real simple way to get started in Storyline because we're working with states, layers, and triggers. Now there's one thing here I, I want to change though. Notice how all three of these buttons are showing selected or another word for that is the active state. Well, they're not all active because we're on the layer more connected. If I click each one again, they'll deselect. So what I'd like to do is set this up so only one of these layers can be, one of these buttons can currently show the selected state. And the way we do that is to use what's called a button set. So I drag a selection around the objects, right click anywhere on, on the, the selected objects and then choose button set. Now what button set's gonna let us do is it's gonna force our selected objects to work like a radio button, right? The radio buttons, those circle buttons you see on quizzes and forums indicates that only one object can be selected at a time. That's unlike a checkbox. A checkbox, multiple items can be selected. But I just want one of these to be selected. I'm going to choose button set one. Everything still looks the same. There's no visual indication to you as a developer that you have a button set. But watch this. So click one. There's my selected state. Click another button and we get green active state, selected state, but we do see the check boxes across each of them to indicate that indeed they've been, they've been visited. All right, and that's how you can build a simple tabs interaction in Storyline 360. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. Hope you enjoyed this quick overview of Storyline 360. This just scratched the surface today. There's so much more you can learn. And for more in-depth training, check out Articulate Training at training.articulate.com. Now, if you get stuck or you have questions, of course you're gonna have questions, you're learning new software, just jump into the community at eLearning Heroes. You can find that at community.articulate.com. Start a new post, tell us what you're working on, tell us what you'd like to do. Maybe you saw something as an example that you would like to build. Just let us know and we'll be more than, more than happy to help you out. All right, hope you enjoy the rest of your day.